News broke this week that solar EV startup Lightyear has declared bankruptcy. This comes just weeks after Lightyear finally began production of its first vehicle and announced a second vehicle that would be a significantly cheaper volume model. So with things looking up, how did we get here? Hey, I'm Creech. This is Creech and Cars, and today I'm going to be going over the story of Lightyear. I'll take a look at the brief history of the company and its models, and then I'll go over what went wrong, and finally, I'll offer my thoughts as to whether or not Lightyear has a future. Our story starts back in 2013 at the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. This is an event held every year in Australia, and different teams bring their solar-powered creations to drive over 3,000 kilometers, or nearly 1,900 miles, across the Australian outback. There is a Challenger class, which is for non-street legal cars that are largely impractical that try to obtain the best average speed. But there is also the cruiser class, which is for multi-seat vehicles that are ideally road legal. A team of engineering students from the Technical University of Eindhoven in the Netherlands brought its cruiser class vehicle, the Stella, to the 2013 event. With a top speed of 75 miles per hour and the ability to carry four passengers and their luggage, the Stella would take home first place in the cruiser class. The Eindhoven team would return in 2015 with the Stella Lux, and that was the only vehicle to compete with a license plate and legal registration. Unsurprisingly, the Eindhoven team won the Cruiser Class again. For the 2017 World Solar Challenge, the Stella returned with a fifth seat and the team three-peated. It's also important to note that all versions of the Stella were energy positive, meaning they could produce more energy than they consumed. That same year in 2017, five of the students would launch the Lightyear company with the plan to produce the world's first commercially viable solar family car. Now, making the transition from a specialty solar car designed to make a 1900 mile trip to producing a street legal car that satisfies the strict design and safety regulations of the transportation agencies in different countries was the biggest challenge the team had ever faced. Not only would the drag coefficient have to be increased, but countless heavy safety systems would have to be installed that would greatly increase the weight of the car. And of course, the team would have to design a car that could be built in a way that would make it a financially viable product and fit it into a profitable business model. They quickly came to the realization that a product like this wouldn't be just a solar car, but quote, the electric car that charges itself. With that goal in mind, Lightyear created the Lightyear One. Lightyear's first model would be a battery electric vehicle that could be charged in the traditional manner by plugging it in, but it would also have five square meters of solar panels. These solar panels would allow the owner to drive for months without charging. And while it's not a true solar car, it is a huge step towards the creation of one. The design and technology of the One would allow it to drive 6,200 to 12,400 miles per year off of these solar panels alone, and they would charge at a rate of 7.5 miles of range per hour. Obviously, those in sunnier climates would benefit the most from the solar panels. Lightyear planned to put the car into production by 2019 and bring it to market with a starting price of around $136,000. Lightyear also touted that even for those who lived in areas with little sunshine, the one would still be able to get 450 miles of range on a single charge, which is still a good number today, but it was unbelievable six years ago. Despite the high price, Lightyear was able to begin receiving deposits of over $20,000 from customers who wanted to reserve one. Unfortunately, the company missed the 2019 projection for the first production run, and by the end of 2020, with the added challenges of global events at that time, the Lightyear One was still nowhere to be seen. By 2021, the company had brought in over $110 million in private funding, and at this point, Lex Hofsloat, the CEO, thanked investors and said the Lightyear One would be on the market in 2022. Flash forward to June 2022, and Lightyear had changed the name of its first model to the Lightyear Zero, and announced a price increase that would make the Zero total around a quarter of a million dollars, putting it in the same range as models like the Bentley Flying Spur. This was obviously not what investors wanted to hear, but there was good news coming. Lightyear would go on to announce the Lightyear 2. This model would be smaller and cheaper, with a target price of around $40,000. The two would offer less solar capability, but Lightyear still claimed that it would need to be charged three times less than a traditional EV. Lightyear claimed that it could get this volume model into production by 2025, and the CEO said that the company had learned a lot during the development phase of the Zero, and would be able to apply a lot of the same technology to the two, while fitting it with a very stripped down interior to save money and weight. Lightyear also announced a partnership with Valmet to assist in the actual production of the car. 
In December 2022, the Lightyear Zero finally entered production. This was without a doubt the best news the company could release, both from a financial point of view and just the overall technological point of view, where a partially solar powered car would be produced for people to buy. Considering the hefty price tag, Lightyear only planned on producing 150 examples for the first model year. More good news came when the company announced it had secured over 60,000 reservations for the Lightyear 2. But it all came crashing down on January 23rd, 2023. Lightyear released the following statement, quote, We had to submit the request for the opening of suspension of payment proceedings with respect to Atlas Technologies BV, our operating company responsible for the production of Lightyear, unquote. This is basically saying the company was letting vendors know that it had no money to continue with any payments and was beginning the process of going into administration, or as Americans say, going into bankruptcy. Shortly after this statement, the Netherlands court had approved the request and the company was officially bankrupt. It's not clear yet as to exactly what went wrong, but I think from a bird's eye view, a team of engineering students greatly underestimated what it takes to design and engineer an automobile from scratch, build the infrastructure to mass produce it, market the vehicle, and ultimately be able to sell it at a price that people could actually pay. With a company that grew to over 500 employees, there were likely numerous inefficiencies along the way that cost the company precious time and tens of millions of dollars. Despite the bankruptcy proceedings, the leadership at Lightyear still remains hopeful for the future. So is there one? Well, one key number to keep in mind here is the 60,000 reservations for the cheaper model, the Lightyear 2. While the lack of brand recognition and resources are significant obstacles, the fact that Lightyear was able to obtain tens of thousands of reservations shows that there is a market for this type of vehicle and that a good amount of potential buyers wouldn't mind taking the risk of buying a car from an unestablished brand. That is an incredible achievement for a small star to reach that shouldn't be ignored. However, there is only one way I can see Lightyear making a comeback after bankruptcy, and that is if a major automaker or conglomerate acquires the intellectual property and then produces the models itself. While that certainly is a possibility, I think it's much more likely that the first solar or partially solar powered car will come from a more traditional source. For example, the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid can be equipped with a solar roof that can add a few miles of range per day. While that's not super impressive, it is a reminder that larger automakers aren't ignoring solar power, and they have significantly more money, time, and personnel to throw behind solar projects. And even with the capability of a major automaker, the prospect of a $250,000 car that does 0-60 to 60 in 10 seconds and has uninspiring looks is just not reasonable. For this change to take place, the technology has to progress to where average people are not only able to buy a solar car, but also want to buy a solar car. So that's the story of Lightyear, the first attempt at a purely solar powered car company. I hope you enjoyed this video. On this channel, I talk about car news, history, and culture. So if you want to see more videos like this, check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.